Hello, everybody, and welcome to a new interview from MinMax. MinMax is a place about games, friends, and getting better. Uh, this interview today is with Nick Calandra, the former editor-in-chief of Escapist, and Ben Yahtzee Croshaw. You might recognize his voice from Zero Punctuation over at The Escapist, which has been running for 16 years, but it has now ended because there was an exodus at The Escapist. Uh, Nick and others were let go. Other people uh, jump ship as well. And so they formed Second Wind, which is an independent media organization here to kind of carry on the best bits of what they were doing over at The Escapist, but in more of an independent style way. And so in this discussion, we talk about forming a new media outlet, getting away from corporate demands, the stresses, the challenges of having roadblocks of people above you in a corporation saying no when you just want to interact directly with the community. We talk about you know, some similarities between the origins of Second Wind and MinMax since we formed after there were layoffs at Game Informer and then I jumped ship and we formed the whole thing here at MinMax. So we hope you enjoy this discussion. There are timestamps below for your convenience. If you do enjoy it, we'd appreciate it if you subscribe to MinMax's YouTube channel for more interviews like it, plus a lot of other content. Or you can unlock the podcast version of all of MinMax's interviews by going to patreon.com slash MinMax with two N's. Unlock that bonus podcast feed and help support independent games media at the same time. But without further ado, here is Nick and Yahtzee. Nick and Yahtzee, welcome to MinMax, guys. Hello. Hey. Hey, how's it going? How are you guys feeling? Oh, uh, nervy. Uh -huh. Every every emotion has gone through, I think, all of us over the past week. Excitement, dread, beer, beer. whatever else. Okay. <laughs> yep. and, beer and, is an emotion. Beer. Yep. <laughs> In Nick's world, beer is an emotion. <laughs> yeah, what, what is the feeling now? You guys have launched Second Wind. Uh, the name held true. I mean, the Patreon numbers, I think, are still confusing and not quite coming through yet because there's a bunch of free trials, right? So those are misleading. Yeah. Okay. We are uh, way far and above and beyond where we thought we'd be. Really? Uh, I will oh, yeah. We're yeah. Uh, The numbers should update tomorrow, and we should be pulling in probably over 50 grand a month already. Jesus Christ. Congratulations, <laughs> team. Yeah. Ben, does it feel like mission accomplished for you, or where are you at for this thing? Oh, well, we're a lot more comfortable than we were at the start of last week. I'll tell you that. Yeah, it's yeah, it's really. been real. It's been really uh, humbling the support we've gotten uh, since all that went down. Did you have conversations about we expect this number for Patreon supporters? We expect this number for YouTube. Yada yada yada. We had vague projections based on what the Escapist was making through Patreon and a couple of other factors, but our uh, the results have blown our expectations out of the water. Yeah. I, yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, just the we're expect like we launched merch on Saturday, too. And, you know, they uh, were partnered with Shark Robot for that. And I had told them just based on like the discord to kind of give you the scale of like how big this thing got was our, the escapist discord over four years only had about four to five thousand people accumulated in it. Yeah. In the first three days of this discord for second wind, we have over 30,000 people in it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> What? Okay, there's a lot. Yeah. There's there's yeah. a lot to unpack. I mean, I saw even on YouTube, you guys are at 170,000 subscribers already. Like, you dwarfed us. We've been around for four years at this point. It's like a flash in the pan. So uh, hats off to all y'all. Um, what what do you what do you account it to? What do, the easy shorthand? Uh, right time, right place, right message. Um, yeah, I mean the stars. You know, I don't you know. Maybe the stars aligned or whatever, but. You know, it's not like you usually say that when you get fired, but um, sure. No, we we had, you know, we had spent the last five years on the escapists, like really building out the brand, building up the community. And my philosophy was always um, and, re and really why I got fired probably is like, I don't care about doing 10 million views because in ad revenue dollars, that doesn't do much for you. I want 10,000 people giving us two bucks a month, right? Every month. And so, you know, they just didn't. Like, in the end, this is going to end better for both gamers and for for us, because we just aren't compatible with you know the SEO model that they were building, and uh, I'm a stuck up soul, I guess, and okay. didn't want to to do what they wanted me to do. <laughs> Who is Second Win at this point? Break it all down. Uh, the Second Win is the entire Escapist video team that left. So there's there's nine nine of us that are technically founders. Um, it's Yahtzee, myself. Uh, on at least front face and Yahtzee, myself, Omar, I mean, uh, J Mate and Frost are like our main creators, plus Jack Packard, who ran Adventures Nigh. Um, Frost ran our shows Cold Take and the Stuff of Legends. And then uh, Marty Sleva is with us as well. And then on the back end, 
Uh, we have Omar Ahmed, who's our, our head of production. And then we have uh, Matt Laughlin, who's a senior editor for us. And uh, Jesse Schwab, who actually only just joined us a couple of months ago as a senior editor as well. And then uh, we've been working very closely with Java Starrett, who does Good Blood on YouTube for all of our branding and stuff. Uh, he did the second win logo and everything. Yeah. So yeah, we've got a pretty, pretty beefy team. Yeah, congrats on getting that logo turned around that fast, by the way. That's ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah, we were, I mean, Yassi will motivated. tell you. Like, we were motivated. Let's <laughs> say that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Yassi, I mean, how quickly did you know that you were going to leave? Um, um, well, actually, I, me and Nick had talked about this uh, before, uh, yeah. especially around the time gamers first bought Enthusiast Gaming. Uh, we were floating ideas of sort of like pooling the money together to buy the Escapist between ourselves. Um, but I guess uh, we were mostly fine with gamers and it was mostly stable for a while. But then I guess when Nick's firing came, that's when I realized I had to leave because I'd been in that position before, you know, where the escapist had just been picked to death by a corporate owner and left me the last man standing because that was the only thing, you know, they wanted to hang on to that was reliably made money. And I just didn't want to be in that position again. So I decided I wanted to be with the people I'd enjoyed working with the last few years. Yeah. Did they try and do a counter offer? Like, please, we cannot lose Yahtzee. We'll do everything. No, I was one of the last men out. I think it was just uh, Nick, Jack, and Matt Laughlin who were actually fired. Everyone else was Jesse, by voluntary. Jesse Schwab was fired too, yeah. Jesse Schwab as well. Everyone else was voluntary resignations. And most of those had come in by the time, like, uh, upper management got me onto a call and said, hey, here's what we did. Here's why we did it. Here's the situation going forward. Any questions? Yeah, and I and I think at that point they were kind of half expecting it when I said I didn't want to be part of the company anymore. Oof! Could you hear their jaws drop? Um, no, I just saw some lots of very sad nodding of heads on, okay. the, on that particular call. Okay, uh, I, I mean it's a huge team. I mean it's it's getting out of the gate strong. Congrats there, but I mean that's nine people all with that idea of like what well, we'd like to be full time. That is. A terrifying launch, and I can say that comfortably now that you guys have uh, cleared the canyon. But Nick, I mean, how do you feel about that idea of getting a big group, but that just makes the launch nine times harder? Um, it's actually made it nine times easier. Oh, okay. Like, we we have like our team is so tight knit. Like we, that's why we left together like that. Um, you know, I've I've studied. You know, like I knew I knew at some point this day might come, and so you know. I, I had been paying attention to like what you guys are doing on MinMax and Last Stand Media and uh, Defector Media when that formed. Right. That was when I was like, okay, like if we ever come into a situation like that, that's the strategy to follow. Get people like the solidarity together as a group of people. And like if you have the team that is as close as us, like that's how you do it. And so like when people started saying like this seems like defector media i was like yeah that's what i, I was hoping for when, right because basically how it all happened was like i we were i kind of knew something was coming because a week before i was at home for halloween to, for my mom's birthday and uh my boss the ceo and the cro were out in london at a video strategy meeting and so not only was i editor-in-chief of the escapist i was head of strategy or youtube strategist for all of gamers YouTube channels. Well, as I said, I was at home and not in London at that meeting. So I'm like, you know, if put two and two together, you're like, something, something's not right. Right. Um, and so like, while I'm at home, I get, I get like a report from my boss. that's like basically saying what I've been told all five years that I've done this, no matter how much data or whatever I give them. Yahtzee is the only thing that's profitable. And, and then Frost is like also catching up and making good money. And I was like, okay, well, I know what I know what's coming now. Um, so, like, it, for my own sanity, just to have a backup plan, and like, people have been kind of wondering, like, oh, the YouTube channel was created three days before you were fired. Like, there's a conspiracy there. You knew you were being fired and had a plan. Like, not all of this is. You guys didn't do this over 72 hours. Like, all I did, and you can check the YouTube account name, is called the Getaway. I grabbed that just in case, as a like, as a brand of like, here's my brand idea. I'm throwing on the wall like hopefully we have something we just move to it really quick if we need it yeah so we had, you know get out of jail free card kind of thing but no we um we thought i might be demoted 
and you know like not actually removed because i did so much on the back end of the escapist to keep things running and then yeah we were basically having our morning morning meeting and all that and i was like we were trying to get a hold of my boss and we just omar and i were not getting any responses so like asked him at like not you know messaged him at six in the morning because my anxiety was going up no response nine in the morning no response omar messages him at 11 no response i'm like okay guys i think my time's up and then right after, I think right after Yahtzee, you finished the slate something else, that's when I got the call. And I was like, hey, come on in. Two minute call, very cold. Sure. Just like, see you later. And I'm like, okay, I'm not signing anything. Bye. Okay. And what was the, what was the reasoning? For firing me? Yeah. Uh, basically, just a breakup. It's like, it's not working out. See ya. Okay. And yeah. you could feel just that tension over the last year in particular building up? Not not over the last year. Like when we when we got bought by gamers, it was good. Like it, they enthusiast gaming was was really bad for us. Like it, we were on the same budget for three years. Yahtzee, myself, and uh, Omar were the only full time people at enthusiast gaming, and somehow we were surviving, and we were growing and not getting any extra investment. So gamers buys us, and it, a lot of the people there like have media backgrounds, and that excited me because like EG did not. Have, it was just corporate corporate suits that didn't so i'm like okay like this is great like these guys have media backgrounds they understand the situation they see the value in the escape as they were excited about working with us uh and then as time went on they brought in a manager above me that also very old very old school wasn't working out so they fired him and then i got his job and at that point i kind of knew like my time is limited by then because as soon as you get into the the head job of like running strategy and they give you these crazy targets to hit, you're like, okay, my, you know, I'm on the clock now. Right. Uh, Jesus. Uh, Yahtzee, yeah. how, how were you doing over the last couple of years? It was, it was a building feeling of like, why do I need escapist after all this? Why aren't we just doing this on our own? Well, that's always been a question people have asked me like the last 16 years. They were like, why yeah. didn't you just go independent? Why didn't you just... Uh, why do you need the escapist? You're literally like carrying it on your back. Uh, but I think I've always preferred focusing on the creative side of things. Uh, I've always liked working with someone who can take care of the business and production side of stuff. That's that's the relationship I have with Nick now and that I appreciate. Because uh, I've really got no kind of head for that sort of thing. Yeah. I guess what changed... <laughs> yeah. I guess what changed is that, you know... I'd been in the position before where it, like, it felt like uh, any minute now, uh, the escapists were just going to gonna drop and uh, cut me loose because I was literally the only thing left on it. Um, so I thought, you know, we're going to have to, probably going to have to put up with going independent sooner or later because this seems to keep happening with corporate owners. Right. And I think the other, and I think the other part of it is that um, my first children were born in the last few years. Congrats! And that there's one thing that does for you: it's to help you understand that things can change at any moment, and you're just going to have to put up with your life being something completely different and a lot more tiring now. Yeah. What uh, What inspired um, so much confidence in Nick uh, for you to? When him and the rest of the crew were out the door, we're like, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hitch my way into them, just so you can focus on creative. You didn't want to go solo for that reason. Well, it's because Nick was always like a creator's editor, I suppose. Uh, he was like the driving force behind the turnaround of the Escapist. He's just this sort of, he's always just projected this great confidence that rubs off on everyone he works with. That's why um, you know he attracts people to work for him so well. Uh, and I guess we all felt it because we all were in, like in lockstep agreement that we wanted to work with Nick and not whatever, you know, corporate suit collar they wanted to put in charge of the escapist. Yeah. Yeah, Nick, I guess it's a shame if we don't really dive into the weeds in this interview since we do kind of have roughly similar origins for, for MinMax and now yeah, we can, I mean, we can dive into the weeds it's just, just as long as it's not IP stuff. Like, <laughs> <specific>. <laughs> Yeah, okay. like we were in the middle of like negotiations for like ZP and, and all that. So, um, but yeah, I'm okay. happy to, I don't, I didn't sign anything. So <laughs> ask me away. I'll let you know if I can't use it. Are you feeling optimistic? Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yep. About the IP stuff? Uh, yeah. yeah. Gamers have, um, 
they've been a bit cowed in our more recent interactions with them. Okay. And that means that you'd have to buy some of this stuff? Uh, well, that's that's what we can't get into. Okay. Uh, All right. That's <laughs> there's, 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 uh, we're hoping, I, I think Jack just messaged our Slack, so I don't know if there's something in there about that right okay. now. But. Everything, everything's still evolving in a big way. No, it's yeah. a, yeah, it's nice. It just the messaging wise of like having the group, like it's a tough balance. And this is what I was thinking about a lot. And, you know, it's, it's funny. Um, you mentioned uh, the sports site as a, as a reference, because like Aftermath also launched last week, also citing, why, why am I blanking? What's the name of that site? Defector. Uh, citing mm-hmm. that as, a, as an example as well. It's weird that both teams got out in the same week for like, hey, independent games media. And it's like, hey, we've been beating that drum for a while. That's nice. But yeah. I mean, the, the thing that stressed me out, um, looking at it, it, everybody is just like, okay, you want to convey confidence in the messaging. You want to have a roadmap. You want to have a crew. So it's not just, hey, it's me doing streams. Here's a Patreon if you want it. Like people have had, everybody on the internet has that, right? You want to do something a little bit different. But then it's also the, the problem of like, how do you project that confidence, but also be flexible in a way instead of projecting confidence and say, we're hiring a team of 30 people out of the gate and yeah. go. And yeah. so it, you did it. I mean, you have a big crew, but mission accomplished so far. Yeah. So far. I mean, we haven't put any actual videos out yet. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you want to get bogged down in the details, I suppose yeah. that's uh, technically true. Uh, Nick, what uh, what stands out to you as, as the biggest lesson so far? Um, you know, you probably have thought about this and lost a lot of sleep about it, but lessons in messaging the launch of a Patreon. I'm very curious about this. What, what have you learned? Um, I mean, we you know, we've been running the Escapist Patreon for yeah. five years, and when I was brought in to re- fix the Escapist brand as, like, the most hated gaming brand out there at the time, right? you know, you're basically saddled with that and, like, not only did that like relaunch as 2.0 and then also went through it again with the editor in chief right before me. So I got, I literally had a sandwich in my hand and I'm like, what do I do with this? And, uh, you know, I, I, I've came from the Midwest and like my sites, you know, never had millions of views or anything. So I really stepped into something that like making my first community post on the escapist was terrifying. Cause I was like, yeah. Oh God, like, this is Yassi's audience. They're going to hate me because they're going to think I'm going to, you know, mess a show up or do something corporate or whatever. But over time, I built up that trust with the audience. And like, that's the the one thing like I've really taken away from all this, like seeing on the Internet, just like my, my name all over the place and people saying, like, noticed how much I did to fix the brand. I, I had never realized, like, how much impact I had made in that way, um, which is really nice to see. But like. Yeah, I mean, it, you know, messaging wise, I mean, we we really tried when we were all getting fired or let go or resigned or whatever, like I had told the team like Defector did it right. Like, you know, just stay together and, you know, we as a team are very tight knit. It's and everything that we do on the escape is collaborative. It's never, you know, Yahtzee just making ZP anymore. Like we're collaborative on these things and Cold Take is collaborative and you know, we have artists working on shows together with the editors and the writers and, you know, Marty editing the scripts. And um, I think it's just, you know, people are asking, like, how we got started so quickly. It's like, well, we had a working model on The Escapist and we just brought it right over here. Exactly yeah. what we did. And now it's just updating brands, cleaning things up, getting more organized and go. Yeah. It, it has been surprising to you how not easy, but, you know, relatively similar it can be to do things completely independently. Yeah, I mean, you know, even though we were we were a corporate outlet, like we basically ran ourselves independently. Like for the five years that I've been running the Escapist, myself and my former managing editor John Frischa sold more sponsors than the sales teams at these corporate companies. <laughs> like <laughs> we we made all the money that we were making came in from my team. Like corporate really didn't do anything for us, or otherwise right. we wouldn't be in this situation. I mean, for how many, yeah. like how many times extra punctuation has been running for over a year and a half. And I think what, seven, eight episodes maybe had sponsors on it and they all have hundreds of thousands of views. And then you go look at skill up and he's by himself and every single episode of something he puts out has a sponsor. Right. Right. So I'm like, what do we, what do we need a corporate company for if they can't even sell our stuff? <laughs> yep. That is, that is the big takeaway for sure. What do, yeah. I mean, I know it's a, a huge chunk of your life. What do you count them um, that? I don't know, the turnaround of escape is for. How do you how do you focus on that? You, you're making post to the community a level of faith that you're not going to mess with zero punctuation and building up new shows. I mean, give me the big pillars for what you think helped 
turn around the community and their attitude towards the escapist? Yeah, it, it was really just being transparent with them. Like, yeah. you know, if we're introducing a show, we send it out to them for feedback and see like, what do you, what do you like? What do you don't like? Um, when I would make changes to a schedule or something like that, like we explain everything. I, I like to over explain so yeah. that I don't have to go in the comments and answer all these questions. Of like, why'd you do this or whatever? Like, um, you know, really, I mean, that's like the one thing. Yeah, just uh, everybody knew what was going on on the escape as we talked about our reasonings for Patreon and why we needed it and what our goals were. And my goal, you know, the corporate companies do not like you being transparent about a lot of things. And right. like, I, that's I think that also I know that led to my firing because like one of the last things they were mad at me about was we had our successful, not successful, successful in viewership, not successful in revenue because they were only three minutes or our three minute review series. Um, they they wanted me to move it to its own channel, basically to send it off a die, which we knew. Um, and we put out like an update video to the channel because I'm always being transparent about what we're doing. And I laid out like, here's here's the reasoning, like it's gonna increase the CTR because people will be on that channel specifically for that show because a lot of people aren't clicking on it here because they're only clicking on ZP or cold take or whatever. Right. Uh, and then like our parent company asked us to do this experiment, so we're going to do it. I literally got yelled at because I said that. Yeah. So in, in summary, uh, <laughs> to get a rapport with the community, uh, be sensible and honest, yeah. which is something yeah. that the corporate owners apparently aren't capable of. Yeah. No, it is really refreshing to be in the independent space and just like, I don't know, maybe it's just a control freak part of me, but just being able to like focus a message like here is what we're trying. We're going to be as transparent as we can possibly be on this front, but this is where the effort's going. This is coming up at this time. Like it's just, it seems like some simple stuff and I'm always confused by media corporations out there why they can't be better just for explaining this is what's happening, everybody. I, I know yeah. it's just, I think there's an overall take very correctly that the internet is uh, a ball of rage at times and you see comments that are so mind-numbingly stupid that it makes you want to cry but yeah. you know the majority of the audience for most communities they're reasonable people that can understand if you have to shift some things around in the schedule or why you're making the creative decisions you're making right mm -hmm. yeah i mean uh yeah i i don't know i just corporate media is just all about scale and you know basically it the the la one of the last things I did was like I, they wanted me to rerun Prima Games and like on the Escapist they our video output was like about twenty one to twenty two videos a month and we were doing you know five point six something million views across that. Well, their their entire philosophy was if we increase our output we'll get more views and I constantly fought against that. I'm like how like Yahtzee, it's almost like these companies forget like yeah, for Yahtzee to get a video out he has to play a game every week. Right. <laughs> That's part of the working hours days. Like that's what we're in here to do. If we're not playing games or watching movies or TV or whatever, we don't have things to talk or write about. And they don't, they don't put that into account. That's like, it's always your time. And it's like, no, that's, that's research time doing that kind of stuff. Yeah. And, and games so, aren't getting any bloody shorter these days. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So my, one of the last things I did was like with Prima games, we were trying to relaunch that tent channel. So I put a team together and we, we got out like 55 guides over like three days or not three days like oh three like three weeks or so we got 55 guides out. okay and that was basically my way of proving a point that just because we put out more videos we don't get more views and like i think combined those videos did like twenty thousand views right right over and, 55 videos <laughs> i know you're probably getting this a lot and it's such a big weird question but i mean what, what's the takeaway from your journey here so far about the future of games media is it just not sustainable for stuff that looks like this type of content under a corporation because they're just constantly going to be trying to make the line go up even if, if it's inherently stupid to try and force it at times i think um just uh like my my, my team is multifaceted in a way that most games media outlets are not they we, they know how to make money as they're making content we're not just thinking about putting out a video we're thinking about like all right, fully emblematics coming out. How do we merch this? How do we yeah. do something special with this? And like, because the content itself often, unfortunately, doesn't make the money itself, especially if you're relying on ad revenue, right? So lots of like, unfortunately, like a lot of people at current games, media sites and all that only know how to write content. They don't know how to actually get people to their content. 
And so my team, very, like we do not focus on Twitter for right now we are because second wind is just blown up on Twitter. But when we were running the escape, it's like Twitter was the least of my priorities for any traffic. I wanted them engaging with the community on YouTube through live yeah. streams and talking to people and like engaging. And that's why we have such a core fan base. Like even on second wind, like the discord for escapist is empty. They all came to escapist or second win. I mean, right, uh, right, right. escapist discord is empty. They all came gotcha. to second wind. Yeah. Yeah, it is interesting. I mean, I think about that a lot of just like the the empty calories views, you know, mm -hmm. that idea of like, oh, this gaming outlet, they released this YouTube video. Look, it's got millions of views. And it's like, yeah, but I don't think anybody cares. No one's looking at that video and saying like, you know what? That's a pretty cool outlet. Like having mm -hmm. some focus, some yeah. push, some direction for people to go, I think is so clearly important of like, okay, you're going to release this big video. You know, uh, it should be pointing them in a certain direction, primarily towards building up the community, joining the community, you know, getting more engaged there. It's going to create a healthier outlet for, for every which way you, you know, slice it, you know? I think what I learned really early on, the first time I went viral, when I first started doing zero punctuation, was that you get like the big viral hit at the start, and that's the spark and millions of views, you get the trendiness. Uh, but if you actually want to sustain that for 16 years, you need to follow that up with consistency. Right. You know, just right. make sure you get something out once a week, uh, keep it at the same like level of quality. Don't burn yourself out, and you can make a nice, comfortable place for people to come back to week on week. That's uh, that's yeah. the long term strategy. Yeah, zero punctuation is is a place for so many people. Like that, the tone of the voice, the animation. It's just that's that's home base for YouTube. Uh, yeah, what, what do you want to do? It's an interesting shift for you. Um, leaving zero punctuation maybe behind. Um, how do you want to change things up for this next phase of your career here? Well, not too much. I mean, one of the first <laughs> That's <things> wild. <laughs> well, one of the first things we wanted to do was like uh, get things back on track. You know, get the uh, get the content stream running that people were used to. Sure. From the from the escapist. So, so I'm doing a new video series called uh, Fully Ramblematic, which is uh, a short form, fast talking, animated game review. Okay. And. Um, <laughs> Uh, I've been taking the opportunity to sort of like polish it up a bit in terms of uh, writing and in terms of uh, delivery. I abandoned Windows Movie Maker officially. I wow. Make it. I've made the first episode entirely in Premiere. There's some extra like animation jobbles and stuff. So I'm like just trying to get my life back to normal. Back to the weekly uh, game review thing. Wow. Uh, because, you know, talking about video games is the thing I'm passionate about. Talking about it and uh, making them as well. And if you want... Uh, 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 and as for what else I want to do with my life, um, well, uh, hopefully Second Wind is going to be an avenue to a lot of that as well. Because that now that we're independent, I can plug my personal projects again. The corporate owners were never happy about that. Yeah, you can plug it so, here. I'll cut it out, but you're welcome to make a plug here if you want. Well, I've got a, a new book coming soon. I've um, just scheduled some recording dates for later this year. Right on. Uh, and uh, I'm working on an indie game uh, called Starstruck Vagabond that I've been working on as a hobby for a few years now. And Nick's working with me as the producer on that now. And we're looking to maybe uh, uh, sort of merge uh, the Second Wind Media outlet with my uh, game development sort of strand as well. Oh, interesting. There's a lot of opportunities okay, there. Yeah, uh, indie label. Yeah, we have a lot of... Um we have a lot of actually investor interest in Second Wind Media or group, and we really don't need the investors at this point right. already for what we're doing here. So now we're looking at, like we we have a team of, you know, between Yahtzee, Frost, uh, myself, j -Mate, like we have a team of really highly skilled curators of games. And so like we're really looking at maybe launching a label at some point. Yeah, that, that, uh, that scares me to even hear about. I mean, you yeah. guys are probably going to nail it, um, but... It's scary to think of like you, there are so many opportunities in front of you. Nick, I feel like yeah. I know this feeling a little bit, a, a fraction of what you've experienced. I'm just like, all right, I can't blow it. Let's focus. Let's call our shots one step at a time. But how are you doing with that challenge of just trying to narrow down and making sure you're you're going um, one step at a time here? I actually I actually feel more free than I've felt in a long time. I, I, you know, when you're in that environment of corporate media like that and my team was confident in me, but the corporate never was. And right. it's, it, you know, it was five years of being told no and, and putting roadblocks in front of me. Like all this, the reason like we're exploding right now on second wind 
is because everything that we're doing is stuff I tried to do at Gamers. I right. wanted merch to get going. I, I had asked for a year to get merch going. We had a, stuff of ledge. People are begging us for merch in our Discord. And I just kept being told, "There's I don't we don't see the value in it. We don't see the value in it. And then I finally get them to agree to it. We sign a contract, and then two weeks later, I'm fired. <laughs> and like we we had all all these meetings with them and all these lists of items, and I was like, we were projecting like a, like seventy thousand, a hundred thousand dollars worth of merch that we could have sold. Yeah. Uh, the sponsors, like I was trying to go, I was going out of my way to bring in sponsors because like all they wanted was six figure deals, and I'm like, we aren't, we haven't gotten six figure deals in five years, guys. Like maybe we're not going to get them. Maybe we should be going for two thousand to five thousand dollar deals and get a high volume of them. Well, in the first week, I've already sold sponsors for us here. Like, we're, we're we've made we're at by the end of like next week, at the end of this month, we'll have made as much money here than we did at the entire year on the Escapist. How um how do you stop your ego from running out of control with that level of uh, accomplishment out well, of the gate? That's tough. Yeah. Well, sometimes when he gets big ideas, he gives me a call and ah. I, I drag him <laughs> drag him back down again. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just uh, nice yeah answer. I'm like I'm super ambitious about things, but I'm also very realistic about things. Like we the like we I very quickly when we were getting fired and all that like spend an entire day my entire 24 hours like building out. Here's what we need for our salaries. Like Yahtzee, Omar, Jack, and I all took significant pay cuts to get this off the ground. And then we were like, here's what we need baseline to pay our salaries and keep doing what we want to do. Yeah. And so I had it all mapped out before, before, well, like Monday night, I had it all mapped out. <laughs> and then like we followed it to a key and we're way ahead of anything I projected already. Everything, yeah, everything's moved a lot faster than we were expecting. It's I mean, like we've already had to like. Yeah. We were actually announced stuff like days, weeks, months before we thought we would be doing so. Yeah, with the, I mean, uh, um, the Patreon, we, the yeah, Patreon, Patreon, we didn't plan to launch. We didn't even, it, it was not going to launch on Tuesday. We, we, I had the page getting together and I basically just transferred everything I, we did on Escapist over there. And then when we said, hey, we're going to do Second Wind, all we had planned to do was say, hey, here's a place to go to find us. Right. Now we got to develop this thing. And then somebody went and found the Patreon and immediately subscribed to the highest tier. And then we, we're in a meeting and we're like, what, what the f do we do? Like this, he's going to post the link. Like, shit, do we launch this now? Like, do we hold it? What do we, do we get, get up, kick him out of there? And they were like, no, I was like, no, like, let's just see where this goes. Let's fucking click the button and ride the momentum. And <laughs> here we are. That's like our decision making for all of this has just been like, what do we do? What do we do? Do it this yeah. way. Okay, go. Yeah. And, and now just, you just got to keep that going. You know, it's yeah. the comparison I made before is like, OK, it's a little bit like you're in the in the living game business of like, how do you keep a community engaged for years? How do you space out, you know, hopefully some milestones, some fun accomplishments yeah. for the community throughout time and whatnot? Um, so what, what is the pitch for what Second Wind is? If you had to boil it down and I'm sure you've thought a little bit about this. What what, uh, what is it as an outlet to you? Yeah, I mean, it's it's really what we did at the escape is it's just a place to escape to to talk about your favorite hobbies and enjoy it like uh one of the one of the stats that has absolutely blown my mind because like i've we have never had this much attention on us and you know all of a sudden we go from 200 people in our streams to 2,000 people in our streams and 30,000 people in our discord and the thing that yeah. has absolutely absolutely stunned me is like back on the escapist we were we moderate really heavily and the community was so positive by the end of it like we just did not have to ban anybody ever really and in the second one discord and on the youtube page we haven't had to ban anybody we've yeah. had banned five people out of and it's just constant positivity so that's that's really just like we just we're not worried about being overly profitable or anything like that we just want to be sustainable and like every single person on this team is a creator like we just want to create our stuff and be comfortable doing it and have fun yeah yeah um it is a fascinating thing of just escapist and zero punctuation over the entire course and like that's the premiere show flagship show i don't know how'd you like to phrase that yahtzee tent pole I think, tent pole the there we go there we go yeah. the tent pole. and then just trying to constantly push people in that you know same vein i guess of trying to direct an audience of like hey there's this show but there's a bunch of other content as well you can check out and i'm sure a lot of people listening to this are like oh zero punctuation yeah i i watched that it feels like a lifetime ago it, it, that's a wild thing and so what what is um what is you know you say oh we're carrying over shows from 
escapist, but what do you think are, are the big new tent poles uh, for a second wind here other than the spiritual successor to, to zero punctuation? Uh, well, Sebastian Ruiz or, or Frost, as he goes by, uh, his cold take show has absolutely exploded for us. Like, yeah, for three to five, you know, the whole time I was doing this, I, every corporate guy is like, you need to find the next Yahtzee Croshaw. And then <laughs> like one day thing. Frost shows up in my inbox. He's got this crazy great voice and I heard the voice and I'm like, okay, you're, you're on the team. I don't care how much you cost. You're here. And then he turns out to be like an amazing writer and people just fell in love with him immediately. Yeah. On, on the site and so like he people are honestly i think just as excited about like cold take returning this friday as they are as fully emblematic like when i've gone through twitter and reddit and everything like people are like yahtzee 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 and then everybody's like also cold cold take cold cold take cold take and i'm like yes that's what i wanted yeah um but the more the, the most exciting part to me is like a lot of people are coming to the platform and saying like well, I think a lot of people like thought Yahtzee and I maybe had a contentious relationship because we we jab each other on streams a lot and stuff. And then after this has happened, like he stuck with us, you know, he stuck with me, and like we did the introduction video, and he, you know, really, I was joking about on the Last Stand podcast before this, like he basically gave me like a eulogy, <laughs> you know. And people are like, "He's not dead, Yahtzee. He's right there." <laughs> yeah. Um, but I think like people really, really realize like. Yeah, like Yahtzee and I have a great working relationship and like I take care of making sure, at least at the corporate company, that like they stayed out of his way. I didn't let them blood like bleed him dry for work. And they wanted him to they wanted me to bleed him dry. They wanted multiple shows out of him. They're like, how do we get two extra punctuations a week? And I'm like, it's not possible. Do do you feel a, a wave of relief, Yahtzee? Um how, how's your internal stress level at this point, does it feel like a big burden has been lifted or is it just the, the fear of the independence creeps in every once in a while here? Well, I think I'll uh, feel better when we're all paying each other. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, our plan is um, to uh, not not take any pay as a, as a company until January 31st of next year. So we're just basically building a war chest right now. Oh, wow. The, of yeah. next year? Yeah, 2024, okay. January, okay. January 31st. Right, right. So yeah, our, our big, our big plan right now is to go to Kickstarter before the end of this year. Um, just with the amount of support we have, like there's, we basically want to up fund our first year up front and then bank all the money we make from Patreon, merch, ad revenue, sponsorships. And then we're basically, that's it. We're sustainable going forward. Where does that uh, philosophy come from? Uh, just I, like we, I've mapped out all the money we need to basically pay everybody what they want to be paid. And like, I mean, we uh, could come up with a name for it. We could call it calendarism. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, my, my team will tell you. Like, I over-explain everything, and like, I, I don't do anything without passing it by them. And I explain, you know, here's how we're going to do it and everything. And I don't know. I just w when working on the escapist, like, I had to do everything I could to get my team keep my team alive basically and like i'm not just an editor-in-chief i'm i go out and sell things i go out and make partnerships i sure you know full-on business guy basically yeah what's your, what's your sense of uh what the community wants from second wind maybe that you couldn't do before i think i think they just want more of what we were doing on the escapist yeah but not corporate owned we've had a lot yeah. of like people saying hey well, i would never have given money to these guys while they were corporate owned but now i they can have all the money they want right i think in some ways um, we've been getting like all this new audience just because it's gone beyond just the escapist and zero punctuation now. It's like we're a, we're a symbol of defiance to corporate capitalism in some people's eyes. <laughs> and how does that I make you feel? Planning for that. I was a, yeah, I was a nobody on Twitter really before this happened. And then, uh, you know, I put out my tweet, you know, just outlining what happened and everything. And then that blew up. And then I got a call from my, my mom at like 6 p.m. that night. And she's like, Do you know, you're on the BBC. I was like, huh? I am. <laughs> well, what were they saying on the BBC? Yeah, yeah. Just re reporting our reporting our story about us wa walking wow, out, yeah. and then, then Forbes covered it, and then BBC we Forbes, the, uh, Angry Joe just reported on it, like literally in the last Young, hour. Yeah, Young Yells covered it. We were on like pretty much the top story of like every major gaming subreddit. Uh, like it's like that's what I mean. Like it's just gone way, way, way beyond anything that we could have. Yeah. Thought of. Yeah, like we so. said. Like I said, zero punctuation was kind of a comfortable place for a lot of people, and I think people only there are certain things people only really notice uh, when you're threatened to take it away from them. Yeah, it's like you're listening to like a constant hum in the background for hours, and then suddenly it goes away, and the 
you suddenly get really worried because something might have broken. Yeah, no, I think, I think that's exactly what happened it. when zero punctuation suddenly stopped. Like all those people who've just been taking it for granted and letting it like ride along in the background all their lives, uh, just suddenly realised that maybe it was going away, and mm. suddenly they realised they'd missed it more than they thought they would. Yeah, it's a it is funny. I mean, the idea of becoming a symbol, but it's also it's just nice to have like a mission. And when the mission is like, hey, you're actually supporting independent games media at this point, like it does feel like an easier thing to rally for than just we're making content owned by a corporation. We'll see how it all shakes out with this big thing yeah. looming over the top of us. I think people are just sick of having things they love die on the vine, you know? Yeah. And I mean, like that, and that stems a lot from my transparency of like, we would, we would update, we would do quarterly updates, like with our backers on Patreon and YouTube right. memberships where I would like literally, I would literally go into like, not, you know, not specific financial numbers, but I would explain like, here's how we're growing and here's what we're doing. And totally. so like people knew, people knew like the escape was, wasn't profitable, but they, they knew we were growing and it was very obvious on the channel that we were like the engagement was up. People were watching more of our shows and like we had a good thing going and then it just kind of ripped out from under us. So, yeah, uh, I saw you, you tweeted recently about how you want to, uh, pay it forward a bit in the game industry. Open the door for for more folks, uh, younger generations. We've talked to Min Max a lot about that idea of when mm -hmm. talking about the young people in games media. It's like they're like all thirty. <laughs> like there's clearly a cutoff. Where <laughs> there's a lot of talent here that isn't being brought up to that level. It's, what's uh, what's the game plan there? Why why is that important to you? Um, I mean, well, that's the entire almost the entire Escapist team is people or Second Wind now is, is people that like you probably haven't heard of before. You know, like Casey Nosu and Amy Campbell and Jesse Galena and Will Cruz and, you know, if, I mean, Frost, you know, Sebastian Ruiz and all that. And my video editing team, like that's part of the reason, like why we all stuck together is because like I like the first time I ever met Omar Ahmed, I had just wrapped up the um, my gamey work, which was yeah. a Kickstarter campaign for documentaries. And yeah, I had a falling out with some friends over that. And then I needed, like I had a documentary lined up for Divinity Original Sin and I needed somebody to go do it with me. Like I had a, I had a project to go do. And so Omar like ended up in my inbox and for the, I was like, she showed me his work. And I was like, yeah, like you, he didn't even know what I was asking for. Basically, he just applied to be like a, one of our reviewers. And then I saw his work and I'm like, hey, what do you think about going to Belgium to film a documentary on Divinity Original Sin? He's like, yeah, like, let's go do it. <laughs> <laughs> so I had never met him before until we met in Belgium to work on this big documentary. And oh, like, wow. we knew from that moment on that, like, we work great together. Like, this is, we're going to do some cool stuff together. And, you know, now he's our head of production and like, him and our great friends. And, yeah. you know, he may, he's like one of the most talented people I know. So, so um, what's, what's the system in mind for, for bringing in new talent then instead of just looking at a bunch of demo reels and trying to find a slot? Like, that's a tough yeah. thing to wade through. Yeah. So uh, the way, I ran the escapist was, you know, we have like our, our older generational talent, like Yahtzee and Jack Packard and Marty. And what I would do is bring in freelancers that, you know, I saw had potential, you know, as personalities and all that and pair them up with existing talent. And then, you know, you automatically, you know, they automatically gain an audience from that just because you're pairing them up with people that have an audience and interacting together. And so like, that's how adventures night came about like our D and D show that we had. Um, you know, Yahtzee, we knew, we knew Yahtzee and the art style would draw people in. And then we, you know, set them up with like the three, t three people that were on our three minute reviews team, Amy, Jesse, and KC. And now it's, it was like, an, it's an absolute fan favorite show of ours and like people adore it. Um, and so like KC, Amy, and Jesse have all gained their own audiences from just that kind of thing. So it's, it's really just pairing people with people that have audiences and giving them the chance to be in front of the camera and, and you know, put them in front of people. It's really all it takes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Yahtzee, are you sick of yellow? <laughs> <laughs> well, we are moving on from yellow. No. Emblematic. Yeah. Oof. We I'm put the logo out about a couple hours ago. Oh my God. What color is it? I'm sorry. I missed it. It's red now. My God in heaven. Yes. Oh yeah, we are are branding a uh, Javid Stare at Good Blood. That man is a digital master. He just he pumps the stuff out, and we're like, holy, shit, this looks awesome. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, well, hey, uh, it's it's fun to see other folks jumping into the the world of independence here. Uh, congratulations on the wild success so far. Um, I speak on behalf of everybody when I say, uh, don't blow it. <laughs> Keep your head on straight, <laughs> one step at a time. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if we. I don't know if we do one step at a time with our team, but it, you know, we're in the middle. Of like 
we're planning to be incorporated by like this weekend already. So <laughs> yeah, you feeling good, Yati? I'm a lot better than I was last week, as I said. Okay, all right, it's, you're good to go. Uh, it's looking good going forward. Yeah, we had a we had a big org meeting this week, and we finally got everything kind of laid out: roles, our content schedule, money, all that stuff. So yeah, and and like I've already seen the first episode of Fully Emblematic is already done. I've seen it, and like it, it just feels like a completely refreshed Yahtzee. Like it, it you're, you'll be laughing for the whole video. I was. I, I don't, wow, <laughs> look at great. that. <laughs> I did have to, I did have to I did have to stuff him from doing one thing. You can't put a crack pipe in the video, Yahtzee. Oh come on. <laughs> Interesting first now. Yeah, yeah. Crack I mean it's it's I mean crack's almost quaint these days. It's all <laughs> it's all meth and fentanyl now. Yeah, yeah. Wait, room to grow, one step at a time, Yahtzee. It's really important, yeah. you know? We don't, we don't have to worry about YouTube monetization, but we do have to worry about YouTube guidelines. <laughs> uh, yeah, final thoughts, Nick? Uh, message that you want to get out there we haven't hit on yet? Uh, no, not really. I think we covered it all. I'm just, I'm just really, really stoked that like this is working. Like I've been, I've been covering games for 15 years, and I'm only 28. So, um, you know, I feel, you know, yeah, the stuff that happened with gamers, you know, sucked. But I think like it's going to turn out for the best for both companies that we're going our own ways and we get to get our creative freedom finally. And, um, you know, as much as like people rag on corporate media and all that, like if I didn't go through those five years of, of that and yeah. I, I, we wouldn't I wouldn't be here right now. So, like, you know, some it sucks while you're in it, but also like we kind of always knew what we were working towards. Yeah, absolutely. Final thoughts, Yahtzee? Uh, no, I think Nick summed it up all pretty well. Just uh, <laughs> let's see how long we can keep it going this time. <laughs> <laughs> hey, good note to end on. Uh, thank you so much, everybody, for watching or listening to this interview. You can always subscribe to MinMax's YouTube channel uh, to check out more interviews like it or unlock the podcast version of all the interviews over there on Patreon. That's a Patreon plug. You guys are experts. I feel embarrassed doing that in front of you, too. You're, <laughs> you know exactly what you're doing. But Nick, Yahtzee, thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate it. Absolutely. Thanks. All right. Thanks so much, folks. Bye. If you thought, hey, this video wasn't bad, well, there's a whole lot more like it on MinMax's YouTube channel. Please help us out by subscribing to our channel and checking out the MinMax Show podcast, also available on your favorite podcast app, the best, most thorough discussion about games on the internet with the deepest dive, our monthly community trivia show with prizes called Trivia Tower, and a whole lot more. Thanks so much for your support, everybody. All you got to do is click that subscribe button. We'd really appreciate it.